Good morning, everybody. This is Hassan Akhtarakche from our European office. Uh, thanks all uh, for joining our uh, uh, July webinar series. And this week, I will walk through an early measure 2D. Uh, I will just, just touch in uh, uh, how you read your data, how you process your data, and how to play with the, the inversion and colors. And also, I will show you how to create some measuring protocols, what we call it common, common files, and using those common files. And we will go through some uh, just simple modeling. And I will, I will show you a couple of features of uh, our software, and then you can play off those and later on. And you can ask me anything through the, this. Uh, uh, webinar questions, uh, you can send your questions or you can send me your question later on also via email. And after this seminar, again, like what we did last week in our image one day, um, we will also do the same thing in follow up later on with the uh, early image 2D webinar, um, the video recording. And also you can now is a uh, get handout of this uh, short presentation just show I, I show a couple of features of these of course there are many features on early measure 2d but we cannot go through in this very limited time on this as we used to do this kind of seminar like almost two days so i have to do this in maybe in 15 minutes so you imagine that many things and uh, we cannot uh, talk about over here but i just want to show main things that you can go through it and then do all your uh, processing easily. Uh, if you have any question, hearing, and just you can your raise your hand and or you just type your question, your comments, I will see it on the screen over here. Okay, let's just go start with this. Our, um, again, here you can see this, I put like here uh, our link that if you don't have early major 2D um, as well as 1D or 3D, you can just download from this link or a demo version. Um, and if you have already have that early major, I mean, you own our early major license, you can also go through our web page and with your username and password and download also the latest. Uh, software and um, if you have any anything is different than your version actually uh, okay here's the link and you can just uh, visit that page and you can find all this related demo version or you can find also the latest version okay again is let's start like this is the main uh, screen uh, windows in world image 2d uh, this is like the same thing uh, like a, a other early major 1D and 3D. Uh, these are the Windows 3D Pro platforms. Uh, it works in all this platform when any Windows version, like a Windows latest version 10, no problem of it, and you can just work through it. If you have any problem unrelated any Windows version, just let us know that. Uh, typically, what you're seeing here is the in the first, uh, like a three images, right? Uh, those of you know already, but some of them may be not familiar. The first one is first image over here. Just get in this uh, highlighter. Okay, this is the first one is here, is which is your field data. Okay, this is what you measure in the field. Then this is the at the bottom last image with the, our inversion results okay what you try to get this geoelectrical model so this gives like a layers and fractures and that means all geoelectrical variation residual variation with changing along the line with that so everything in the 2d uh like you remember if if those of you already have seen our last week webinar everything was last week related with that 
there was nothing related with the lateral along the line. So along the line, everything was same, uniform. But here in 2D, everything related with not only with that, but also with along the line, like, in, uh, like your profile direction, which is your X direction, let's say. So that means if you have any fracture like here, like here, then here in 2D, you can able to detect but in one day you cannot able to detect. Well, there are sometimes there are tricky way of experience of the people on doing lots of one day, they may do it, but it's not easy, it's difficult sometimes, you cannot see it. Uh, but here in order to do the lateral variation, you can follow up. Okay, what we are remaining here is in the middle, right? Okay, here is the, the, the middle image it shows is the theoretical data. So, when 2D, what you're doing, though, like the first one is here, you're getting this uh, field data. And then you're trying to get to convert this field data to geoelectrical model. In order to do that, you need to create uh, some simple model and then with simple model, create a theoretical data and then compare with this the first two images. If the first two images is match and which is controlled with RMS, and then that means is the your model is correct, and then you're done with this inversion. But okay, this is the the way of doing it uh, for um, data processing. Simply simple way to to, to see. It. Okay, just let's go on and uh, next one. Just let me clear this one here. Okay, what you see is in the Erdemijer, um, uh, if you are have familiar with Erdemijer 2D, uh, here's the function of uh, many tools, so you can see it. And then uh, you can read your data, you can uh, just uh, set previous setting, or from here you can change your setting, you invert. It mainly what we did, like we, we call this the three step here. Read your data, check pre-setting, and then inversion. So that's all you can do it. Many, solve many things is uh, like without playing any other uh, uh, setting options, but we will go through these settings. So then the others, others these are information here, uh, it's in handout, but you can find it. But I will, I will not go details as here, but I just give it to you as a reference and you can look at it later on. And another bar also we can go through. What I will do, I will go through all these in the software. So just, I just want to show you this here is uh, what you see over there. So we will go through all these also, the, this graphical toolbar and you see on the third line on the software. Okay, again, like here, typically is a processing procedure. So, read your data, okay? And then change inversion setting. You can change it from here, or you can just choose from pre-setting. Like uh, there are pre-setting, I will show you shortly. Uh, surface data, like uh, marine data, conductive zone, uh, earth data, and many other options. You can just uh, choose those pre-setting easily. And then just go inverting. And if you if you want to edit your data, you can edit. But I will, I will, we will go through it also from edit and run inversion. And after that, you just check your histogram. Try to remove your noisy data and return the histogram. Uh, that will be is a recommended generally. It just um, read. Don't remove sometimes nothing at the beginning. Don't eliminate any data. Just do one inversion to see that your data, how is that your data inversion uh, approach? And then you can follow up that histogram misfit data distributions. And then now we can just run again, remove some maybe some data in the misfit histogram and then run inversion. And then until you reach uh, 
the reasonable result, which is controlled generally with RMS, sometimes ELTO, depending on the data. If it is noisy data, we choose generally for uh, ELTO norm. Okay, just is like uh, the steps, and then just go on the next one here. Initial setting, setting parameters, initial setting, forward model and setting, rest to the emergent setting, IP emergent setting, terrain setting, CRP setting. So we'll just start with this initial setting. So generally, but initial setting, whatever you choose here is like a previous uh, setting. That means that whatever you did before, that is, is there. You are using surface data setting, then you can use surface data setting. When you do it, this parameter will change. I mean, why don't we just go through this in the third imager and then we can we can really see and each parameters a little bit and then do some processing and practice on the data. Again, this is just for information for later on. You can see it on this handout. You can download from handout this already this presentation. Now the one thing is here, if you change any criteria for noise data removal, the initial setting window, all manual data edits and record removal. So that means is if you already edit this data in manually, somehow you change for uh, press setting, it will change also the everything. Then it's better to read, read, read your data one more time after choosing your press setting. Okay, third images can read uh, many different uh, data formats. Um, we are not putting all instrument data format, but uh, uh, typically is our measures can read our instrument format with what we call it STG format, okay, STG format, and most popular uh, file format TAT, and this is available from any uh, instrument manufacturer, they convert their uh, data to DIT, a DAT data format. If you don't have these and you have different instrument, different format, you can also create your data file typically in Excel, uh, uh, reading your data in Excel and then just or converting in a different uh, editor into URF data format. Of course, we have some other instrument uh, format, but these are the main the three format is uh, we uh, two main format, and then you can create your own universal list of the data format. This is the like uh, example here. Um, you can see that example of how you create your uh, your own your data into URF format. Here's explanation. And again, is uh, these are all related, all written in the manual. If you have a demo version, you just go to help under help or your software license and health menu, and the health menu, the instruction manual, instruction manual, you will find all this. Okay, before uh, going to this uh, uh, terrain, I will just go through easily in what I told you that about after this in uh, like six, five slide, slides, and just go, I'll just go through it. But let's just go over the measure to the here. Okay. Uh, by the way, those of you have been here last week uh, for um, the Mission One Day webinar. I had some problem in this the, 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 during the processing, and I found, figured out that my computer had some virus, and I had to clean up it. And then it works fine uh, at this moment. There's no problem, <laughs> so it wasn't any issue of the. Uh, the I mean the related software and nothing just related with my computer some conflict of the files and just cleaning up and it worked okay here uh just go to uh, here uh, okay again here is the menus like a file menu and you will find read read user setting a uh, user setting means is the okay, initial setting if you already have like a uh, you let's say you have a uh, many data lines in the same area and then you just uh, make one first, let's say, first line inversion with different setting options. You change the setting and then you end up with a nice setting. And then you want to apply the same setting with all your other 2D lines in the same area. Then you can save this setting and then you can just read 
each for each line for this uh, uh, setting directly and then start inversion doing the same setting the same features of the inversion parameters or modeling parameters they say and then you can use it so you, there is a, another option read your comment file and then for the modeling comment file with the model and then you can also read your inversion output if you already done and you go back and read your output you can show it highlight it uh, if you have a repeated data it, you can also do like a time lapse and if you have a topography then you can read your topography if you have underwater data like a water environment data like an underwater topography you can read that if you have a, like a continuous profile what like a, in the journal from the uh, towing the cable on top of the water, under the water, and then you move like a, a three, four kilometers per hour, and then just measure underwater environment. Then you can use also this feeding your CRP depth file in that case and conduct with the file. Uh, many things. Okay, let's just go like a here. The first thing is okay, I can just go to the for three things here just read the data. I'm going to read the data here. Okay, like like a here, I have a run Amistad data. Okay, this is my data, and then I just want to go through like uh, editing statistics. Uh, okay, what I said before, just three step, right? Read your data, change your uh, press setting. I just want to. This is like a surface data. I just put this to surface setting, press setting. Okay, and then that means that this also is here. Okay, here you can see it. And I, if I choose this different setting, and then you can see that some of the parameter is changing. That's for here, what you see is removal data, okay? If I choose, for example, conduct of earth, like a, these are all related to signals, uh, like a minimum values of the voltage divided by current, maximum repeated values, Minimum apparent resistivity, maximum apparent resistivity. So these are like uh, the outliers of this uh, data removal criteria. So this is typically surface data. I will choose surface data. Don't use uh, different things. For example, uh, if you have a let's say surface data, but if you use in uh, let's say CRP data, and uh, just 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 go through like this and then do the inversion, and maybe you will get like a different things like a kind of blocks because of crp it's continuous with the different setting needed to use it for this case so just go through a surface setting okay just go and read one more time okay open the data and then surface setting you already choose and you can just see that it's used this for I will not go detail all these in more because these are, as I said, these are like a, almost two days in talking and about this, all these features. Uh, but there are, I just want to show you there are many features of the, I mean, the setting options in the immersion parameters, IP immersion terrain, and then here. And then just go through like here, uh, the simple, sing, simple step, read, change your setting, and then start the inversion. Okay, you can do like inversion just hitting here, or you just go here, edit, okay? Edit surface data. So it will show you that all data points, you can click your each data points, it will show you which electrodes are used for this measurement. Here's the electrode A, electrode number one, and then B in four, so that means is that N in M is in the middle, that means like a typical Runner array. Like a here, you can see again is A and B is outside, and MN is the uh, close each other in the middle, which is Schulenberger. So this is Schulenberger array, okay, typically. So you can see that. And then you can, what you also you can see, not only electrode positioning, but also that data point over here, what apparent rest values corresponding in the bottom. And then what voltage and line current correlated on this one. If you if you have a different setting, maybe, and then and this will be on this data not, but it will if you have any removing data and depending on this uh, 
press setting, and then this will be show you here black dots. Okay, here you wanna you wanna edit some data. Uh, you can just uh, click and then on the keypad uh, keyboard and just hit delete, and then this will be black. So that means this data will be deleted when I do the version. Okay, so but if you don't wanna delete, just um, <coughs> Go and press it again in this case, and then it will be undeleted. Okay. Here, another thing is in the uh, uh, you can edit also your electrodes. Okay, you can see that how many electrodes you're using it. And in the first column, electrode, no, electrode numbers. Okay, here is like a 56 electrode. How many noisy data, number of noisy data, all zero. Total number of the data and this related electrode one is nine. Okay, if you see that in your data, is electrode number one is the, the problematic during the measurement or somehow is not good, you can just click any electrode and you can remove it. If I remove it and you can see that this, this measurement will be removed. So you can edit manually depending on the, your, the, your uh, measuring criteria here, what we, what we call is here. Like, like injected current scatter, but like you can see it. And you can check also go to debug surface raw data, measured voltage values. So I, I see this voltage value is not good. I just go delete and then it will be deleted. Okay. This is like how you can do manual. But I don't know generally what I do, I just go through. Don't delete nothing at the beginning. Just read your data. Okay. And if everything is uh, uh, statistically, you can check from data having statistic here. You can statistically check your data based on your surface uh, setup. There is no data will be removed. So I have a 424 data point, and there is nothing will be removed. And based on my criteria of these, what these are is maximum resistivity, minimum resistivity, minimum voltage, uh, so on. So there are those based on these criteria, there's nothing in there. Okay, if first, just the first thing is just go and read, choose, choose press setting, and then invert it, okay? And after inversion, you can see here, it's a good data set. It will be go like a two, three iteration. It will be less than 10%. So he, here you can see like iteration number three, RMS 2.3. So now you're almost a good in, uh, in the result. So you can just go through, for example, if I have a noisy data here, okay, and just go on uh, uh, right click, okay, and right click, you can go view data misfit history, okay, and the, and the mouse and right click, go like this. And you will see that here, if you have a good data set, that is exponentially decaying like this. If you have a noisy data, like let's say if I have a noise data, I just uh, invert it, and then I don't see this uh, exponential decay. I see like uh, going up, down, up, down, or I can see this uh, Gaussian distribution, like like and uh, let's say like like this. I have like uh, this kind of distribution, or I have like this going down, like this going up again, down again, up again. So that means I have a noisy data. Okay. If you have a noisy data like this, and what you can do is um, just go and, uh, and let's say, go back here again. Uh, okay, let's just go through like this. If you have a, a good data, but you have a, some uh, some data will be removed, just go on a keypad arrow and left and right in the keypad, and just go through like this. You can see that. I have a here and the blue line and right of the blue line it shows here two data points okay I can just remove that for example in this data it does no need but if you have a such noisy data RMS still is more than 10 percent right to reduce it and you can just I, I will recommend you just go to the histogram try to remove a little bit little just remove maybe a couple data points here first remove it and then invert it again okay so in this case, you will approach your RMS is like in less than 10%, and it will be good sense to do this. But if you remove, like a, if I just go again here, this histogram, 
If I try to remove like this, um, that means I am removing 100 for it, that's too much. Don't remove like this. If you do that, you start losing lots of data points. So it is warning me now. You have, you're removing 30, almost 34% 34 of your data. Are you sure? If I say yes, and then you can see that here, I, I remove many data points over here, and on the top, and over here. So I'm just not losing the information. So don't do that. Try to remove little by little. Repeat that process many times until you reach the good inversion results. Okay, one other thing is this here. Um, uh, again, you can see measured voltage. And also, if you have a, a our system, um, your data will be recorded. Uh, or uh, as well as the data file, the measurements, and also contact resistance. Remember, in the, each time in our system, before injecting current, instrument check contact resistance. Try to adjust the, the how much current and voltage adjustment and gain and everything. Uh, just make that adjustments. What it does is. Uh, store this uh, contact resistance information in a different file. What we call this a contact resistance file. At the end of the survey, you have a data file, you have a contact resistance file. So you can read your contact resistance file here. Uh, I think I don't have it here, uh, demo director, but I do have some, some other data. So when you have like a contact resistance file, CRS, and then just read that your contact resistance file, and then you can try to uh, understand that uh, where is your uh, high contact resistance related with your noisy data and try to make a data quality comparison to that as well as that uh, looking to a contact resistance. Okay, this is the, uh, the typically and okay for doing three step inversion. And I will also now show you to if you have a any terrain file, any topography, I would recommend to include. It's like a general for, uh, let's say, if it is less than 10, 15% slope, and then you can incorporate it. If it is less, there's not much uh, changes you can see. So what, how you can do that, just like, let's just go on a reset, okay, here, and then I will read this one data, what we, I call it this uh, pyramid data here. Okay, pyramid data. And then, and after reading this, if I have a topographic file, okay, this is a shows previous setting. What is what was previous setting before? Length, surface data. So it's already chosen there. So I don't have to go back and do it again. And then and just go through like this to uh, read terrain file here, okay? And then I will just go read terrain file. Here I will show you what is this terrain file here. Okay, what you can see is here is the uh, and the header, and then after header, and there is a two, and then they done two column. But let's just go back this to our uh, presentation. Here is a, a terrain file. Typically, is a here on the right side here is a header terrain file. Unit is meter, and uh, Try to write this as exactly here, unit and M is high, the capital and meters. And then two, two means is case two. So there are two cases in the main surface uh, topography, case one and case two. Case one is in the, when you try to measure this distance uh, and uh, between zero and five in horizontal distance, like a, uh, let's say, um, the map distance or GPS distance, and then you can use case one. But if you, you have measured this, this slope distance between zero and five here, this slope distance, then you use case two, okay? Then what you need is the X distance and elevation. So you don't have to enter every electrode position elevation. So you can just simply describe your topography, uh, however is convenient, and just enter that. As long as this starting and ending lines it to describe as a topography, no problem. So of course, not good like just giving 
first electrode and last last point over here to elevation in that case it will be just constant slope so what i mean is try to describe your topography and doesn't mean has to be done every electrode positioning you can do anything is related because at the end software will interpolate between two points and like as a slope constant slope okay <clears throat> Let's go back here again is the earlier today okay i will read this uh, terrain file okay and then just invert it okay so in that case what happened is the first line is again first image is the data second image is the middle is the theoretical values and the last one is corresponding geoelectrical model what you're trying to find so Again, is a, if if I have uh, topography and then I can put it, uh, I can get like a uh, image in with related topography. But uh, I will show you one thing it's here. Just go and read this data without reading topography file. Okay. Now I'm doing this. As you can see that earlier, and then uh, the geometric model shows RMS was about two three percent. Okay. Here's I'm in the second iteration, RMS is 64%. So in order to reduce this RMS, what I said before, just go to uh, histogram, okay? And then you can see here, like okay, going down and up a little bit down. Okay, just go like that. Remove little by, go all the way end, and then try to remove these two up data points. Okay, remove these two up data points and then do inversion again. You can see that I already lost some data. There's, there's no data points over here now. Now RMS is seven, but the, the image is uh, compared with topography totally different. So I still got RMS is low, less than 10%, which is okay. But this result is uh, how you're going to interpret it. We don't, we don't know the reality. So you can get this result, you can say, okay, I got very high resistive anomaly here and a little bit resistive than here. That is, there's another two resistive here. Uh, so that means this can be my result. You never, you never, you don't, you don't know reality until you drill over here and you will not find anything of this. So that means is there is a topography and then you need to go read that topography. Just go back here, read inversion output with the topography data, what I had before. Okay, pyramide, and I will go in earlier result, trial number four, or oh, not this one. I think the second one was uh, read inversion output, pyramide data, trial two. Okay. Oh, again, no, sorry. Just uh, read the version out to try one, I think, yes. So each time when I hit the inversion, it creates some folder. It's called try a folder. So that will give us to, no, I, I, I don't know where was it. But anyway, just easy. Just read it again, and then read terrain file, and then invert it. Oh wrong setting do you see that i read that uh, uh, the first uh, inversion output and then that press setting it's remain there when i read the data it's done with that press setting with this press setting do you see that uh, i think it was a, a crp press setting and if i treat this data with crp press setting i really get different results so still rms 39 percent i will just go to the surface and then do the inversion again Okay. Okay. Just try to do reset. Okay. Let's make a clean, clean result again. Just read pyramid data. We are removing nothing. Read terrain file. Open. And then here, what you're trying to show you that if you choose different press settings sometimes if you choose uh, not to incorporate the topography you may totally get sometimes different results so here is the like a uh, 
uh, expected result in this area. It's a kind of a pyramide in Me Mexico, and it will try to find entrance of the probably in these points over here, high resistive areas is the uh, most interesting for them to, to find it and then trying to get entrance point of this pyramid. So you can see here RMS is like a reasonable and result in this case reasonable. So here's a, what we do go through is the presentation. So what I do is then just go to view, for example, go to inverted resistive uh, section, okay? If you wanna see uh, contours, you can just go contours over here. If you want to see the, the company information, uh, survey information, you can just go to it from here. If you don't want, okay, if you want to cut it ages and just go to ratio, horizontal to depth, and then just cut the ages like this. So this is for presentation, you need to do it. If you want to remove the title, you can just go do it, okay, like this. So other thing is if you like to see that what is the, this is the eighth iteration, what is the, my first iteration is here. The first iteration is homogeneous model. Like a first after the then, first iteration is shows the 17% RMS, second iteration, 11% RMS, and then third iteration is seven. So like a third iteration will be reasonable, then result what you get. And then if you go through it, and higher time you need to decide where you need to which one is you, do. you need to use it these uh, models like iteration number four three and any of these are is true in general so you need to decide okay what other feature i can increase here i can increase the number of color here shows 16 colors and then you can just go through over here uh, like a more and more color up to 256, uh, 256 colors you can put it over here and you can use meter feet electrode number and on the top over here but you can show electrode number or distance okay if you have ip data you can choose an ip while is milliseconds or millivolt uh, divided by voltage okay and then if you wanna, if you have a data also showing, you can show your data points over there. Uh, but in this case, we have just results. And also you can change this electrode uh, numbers on the top here, okay? And then put it smaller, higher, and or different color also you can put it if you like. So there are many different options you can play with this presentation. Uh, most important is here, is that for me is a uh, is color scale so first i try to put this color scale one expected interval for here maybe i said okay is everything more than let's say 1000 ohm meters they are same for me so i don't expect um, between the differences between 1100 they are the same uh, structure geodic structure here and just just go highlight that, and then I just highlight with more colors over here. Okay, and if you can, uh, you can do that here. Uh, let's say uh, increase the number of color or decrease of number of color. Let's just go to like, for example, like the three uh, different colors, three different colors. So that means okay, I have these uh, uh, high resistive areas and all green areas and then i just go through and change this to increase number of colors okay so this way it will help me to understand structure related with the geology and then this with the information i can try to interpret my results so it's up to you how you start but uh, you can start maybe three four different colors or you just go through multiple colors directly. Uh, even if you can just highlight it, these two, uh, let's say, values and try to highlight exactly what value you like to here, put it over here, let's say 10, okay? And then you can see that dark blue is only 10. So that means it's, I have a, a less than 10 meter, everything same for me. I have a 10 to 30, everything same. So you can describe that uh, uh, the limits of the colors 
which is corresponding your mythology or geology is in the area and then it will help your interpretation in that case you can start interpreting in such way okay okay this is all like uh, i can show about this processing and a uh, little bit and i will show you one thing is here uh, but what i promise it's a uh, going too much time over here actually i don't want to take your time but um here is a i just want to show one thing is create comment file so measuring protocol just go to under tools okay create comment file okay just go like a, a surface data for example how many electrodes 56 what is electrode spacing here five meter but i can create one everything because i can use same comment file over and over again with i when i put one and today maybe i will use a four meter tomorrow seven meter then just multiply the instrument with scaling factor okay just put that alone just go setting and depending on your instrument you have a mini sting super sting sting r1 and super sting r1 super sting r8 for example super sting r8 uh, we have a uh, different array types over here pole 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 dipole 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 each gradient strong gradient well, typically what we recommend always to use with our system because of the high um, resolution receiver we have able to detect very good dipole dipole data then we will recommend dipole dipole data so just create okay and then it will create for this uh, about 1542 data points so that means it will inject 272 times current injections and collect 1522 data points and then let's say if i inject a uh, cycle time 1.2 second it will take about 42 minutes measurement this is estimated so whatever you put over here this is not uh, translated to instrument so i can this is just shows the survey estimation time so you will put these values on the in the instrument setup actually okay if you just start uh, simulation you can see that is the uh, red electro shows the current location blue electro shows the voltage electro this is how you measure in the field uh, for this type of type layer okay i will just save this okay and just save temp okay just save it and that's it you can create other things also other different uh, array types for example strong gradient and 50 percent the overlap and then just create and then start simulation you can see that now is in the 50 percent overlapping red is again is the current positioning blue is the uh, voltage electrode so like a, i recommend always to do first dipole dipole if you see that there is lots of repeat during the measurement just make a uh, like a strong gradient it will take just very short time uh for example this one is takes about four minutes adding another 224 data points so you co combine these two later on dipole dipole and stroke gradient you really get good uh, data quality and data results and the, and the, from this two any type measurements okay i just want to show uh, briefly is the modeling so after i create a comment file and just go to it here read comment file under the file menu and what i have is the here temp okay typo typo and then here is you can say it okay if i have here five meters or three meters i just put three meters electro spacing multiply everything okay here shows the distance okay here's corresponding more or less the depth so this is the homogeneous uh, this is a homogeneous let's say uh, space is a background is the hundred okay uh, if you want to put those in the layer and then just click left mouse button and then just uh, uh, shift left mouse button shift left mouse button if you want to put like a, a fracture in the or division for example here is the control left mouse button it will highlight like this or control right mouse button like this or you just uh, press left mouse button, drag without leaving your uh, left mouse, and then just highlight it. So then you can just click whatever color you want to use it, 
okay and then let's say i'm just going to do this different so in this case you try to make generate your earth model once you generate it you just go to the tools and then just go just so forward calculation means just calculate your theoretical data survey planner means you calculate first the forward model and survey data and then try to use this theoretical survey data make inversion try to capture this model again so just you do like a before going to field, sometimes you like to check your uh, detectability of your anomalies because you try to expect some anomaly, some cavity, some fracture. Try to model that with two easily in, in 2D and then just make survey planner. And then the survey planner will show you at the, at the end what you can able to detect or not. You can see here as in the, the bottom what we give as a model, okay? We try to uh, get this model as in the middle here. So I'm just highlighting, uh, I mean, the here, what I will do, put the first is color scale. I think we put between two, uh, 10 to 1,000, okay? Okay, now you can see this in the top is the red, uh, layer it will showing you here there's a variations here we can see a little bit and another uh, this uh, thin conductor field in the middle and this is the one here it will not show exactly but it's uh, more or less you will get it so now you start getting this fracture to it and then this uh, uh, this layer you cannot able to see clearly so you don't see this layer here so because of variation between 200 to 1000, uh, it will not really show it. So that's like a, a playing game before going to field sometimes, try to, try to see. Okay. Okay, now I will go through these some um, questions as uh, it's, it's coming to, so like, like a, will uh, 2D work Macintosh? Not, uh, this is a Windows platform, but as you know, that Macintosh also uh, works in the both platform. It's Windows platform and then Mac platform. So it's not an EOS system, but it's a Windows platform software. Okay, the another question is, uh, okay, if there is a statistical way to compare a time series of 2D measurement of an area. So that means is that like, uh, you have um, many different measurements in the same area, and then you want to see all the, these. And uh, uh, yes, those are like what we call time lapse inversion. Um, you can read uh, many different uh, data, and then just do time lapse inversion, and then uh, it will show you the end the uh, AVI movie of the variations of these measurements. So this is typically, uh, let me just briefly show you over here. It said again, and then just go and read. Uh, here I have uh, in the demo version, you will see like a time lapse data, like a one, two, three different data. Okay, you just read this time lapse open, and then um, you can just run this. And first, your data, uh, you know, this how your setting parameters and everything is done, and then just go here is the time lapse inversion. In time loss inversion, what you need to do is just read this first inversion output. Okay, just go time loss inversion file output. Okay, and then put your monitor data. Okay, at your monitor data here, uh, which is like here is the monitor data is time loss one, and then two, three. Okay, open it, and then when you open this. And then just go inversion. Okay. It will just make all these uh, uh, inversion based on the first inversions, and then at the end, you it will create an uh, deep map images, and you can see those in separate under the folder, or just create a AI movie, and then it will just create a AI movie, and then it will show you at the end like this AI movie. Okay. Okay, let me see another question. I think that's all. Um, 
anyway if you if you are uh, any question further uh, in, information related in this webinar or early major 2 d or anything else please just uh, you can send me email i will follow up everything well if there is nothing else then uh, thank you all for uh, joining this webinar and um, have a nice day bye bye